uh, gender identities beyond the binaries. I shall present my screen for you. I guess now this is visible to you. So my topic of the day, the title is Thinking Straight, the Shifting Epistemy of Gender Dissidents in Literature, Films and Cultural Discourses. So after giving this title, I was thinking that I'm not actually thinking straight, but I'm trying to rethink about the straight view of uh, seeing things especially in the interdisciplinary area of literature, films, and cultural discourses. Though I am talking about um, literature and cultural discourses, my focus area is films and media representation. And presently, I am an ad hoc faculty at the School of Management Studies, NIT Calicut. And my plan of talk is I shall be giving you an overview about the terminology that I'm using in this presentation, then an introduction about the talk, then uh, how uh, this aspect of gender dissidence occur in literature, cultural discourses, and in contemporary films. Now, uh, these are the certain terminologies which I have, uh, I'll be referring to throughout the presentation. So straight, is actually a reference to heterosexual. So by using straight, the term here, I'm actually, I have put one inverted comma there. Uh, so I have to actually read in between the lines of uh, thinking straight and being, uh, I mean, forcing just a critical glance at the way of the, the, our thinking, like how we think straight and how this should be critiqued. Now the term epistemy, uh, in Greek, it means knowledge, understand, and uh, this is, uh, I mean, derived from the feminine epistemon, and which also has a meaning, understanding, knowing, from Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Now, gender dissidency is another term that I use throughout the presentation, which actually gives us a conflicting view about our knowledge about gender identities and gender variance and cure identities. And transgender, that is my favorite area of inquiry and my knowledge. Transgender identity, uh, that discusses about people who disassociate themselves from the traditional concepts of masculine and feminine gender identity. We have familiar knowledge about uh, what it means to be feminine, what it means to be masculine. So we are going to think beyond this binary. That is what... Uh, transgender can bring to your mind. Maybe you already have certain idea about what it means to be a transgender from certain images circulated in popular culture. Now, uh, about this talk, this talk critically looks at the changing trends in gender studies scholarship, By uh, but I shall be focusing on Kerala's public sphere and the shifting discourses on gender identities and sexual practices and uh, sexual desires that is getting visibility in Kerala's public sphere. And through literature, films, cultural discourses, uh, the textual depictions and the representational politics, all these are emerging areas of discussion in this presentation. Now, uh, one significant aspect from premise, I shall start this presentation as gender identity is fluid. It is floating. It is embodied. It is experienced. You cannot say that gender identity is something fixed. And uh, you should be able to think beyond the biological essentialism of binary gender or gender binary of masculinity and femininity. Uh, so during my uh, um, in viva work of MA dissertation, I was asked one question. How do you distinguish between gender and sex? So initially, at that time, I wasn't having that much knowledge about how to distinguish between gender identity and sexuality or sex. Sex is something that is manifested in your body. Uh, it is related to your genitalia and your biology and your anatomical divisions. And maybe there are people who are not even uh, possible of have a clearly defined sexual identity as well. I mean, I'm talking about sex. And about gender identity, that is 
that is quite complex uh, our traditional understanding tell us about gender identity of masculinity and femininity but gender identity is something beyond of that and it is not just focused on your body but it is about what your mind say and this i this identity is always floating it is not fixed it is not fixed reference to any particular gender identity now again i am bringing to your mind what it means to be transgender identity in the western scholarship a person's gender identity that does not match with the sex assigned at birth and then identity as uh, and this particular term is used as an identity category as well as a medical category in the west which means that you have to refer to a person of transgender identity as a transgender person not as a transgender because they use transgender as an adjective and you have to be very careful about it if you use transgender as a noun that is considered as highly dehumanizing in the west and transgender identity is always a personal choice anybody can claim transgender identity if they wish to associate to transgender identity and now another term that is often cited in uh, literary discourses as well as critically discourses is cure cure is a conflict also a conflicting term it's a political umbrella term that is primarily seen as a derogatory term in the beginning but later activists have uh, activists as well as cure personals have chosen it as a term for pride to uh, i mean affirm their identity and this refers to sexuality and also used in gender discourses to refer to gender cureness the fluid identity and it also refers to politics activism culture etc from a non heteronormative perspective so by heteronormativity uh, normativity i shall be referring to gender identity or gender binary binary perspective of gen gender identity as well as sexual discourses now when we come to kerala transgender is a term that is adopted as a term from the west as a dignified term to refer to transgender people but the problem in kerala is that transgender is used as a noun and unlike in the west and uh, sometimes people may refer to them as tg t and g in capital letter all these are certain terms or personal choice in kerala and uh, transgenders as a plural is also uh, popularized in kerala's public imagination and in kerala specifically this term is used to refer to people who recognize as the other just like like uh, one person who's uh, uh, who's born as a male then that person wish to identify as feminine then they choose this identity of transgender and maybe just the reverse as well a particular person born with a female anatomy then they wish to identify as masculine so in kerala in that context also this identity is used so these are certain uh, theoretical possibilities in in kerala regarding thinking beyond gender binary now uh this is also a reference to non heteronormative gender identities and sexualities in indian epics religious cultural and historical documents so in this manner tracing back to the identifications or the cultural past in indian epics that is how gender studies scholarship has uh, began its roots began to trace its past in uh, concerned with transgender identities uh through different scholarships we could identify uh, 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 across different periods like ancient medieval and contemporary scholarly inquiries about the subject in kerala and india how and when transgender identity began to be discussed in indian epic and cultural text so uh, from scholarly inquiries these texts which are brahmanical buddhist and jainist texts in ancient india there are references to gender variant people as third natured individual and uh, these are the uh, terms that you come across in those texts like kliba pantaka tritiya prakriti and napumsaka and in indian medical literature also if you survey you will get a term napumsaka by the presence or absence of procreative ability of people so these people are also now considered as transgender people moving on to the next slide 
the in the epic and puranic stories as i was saying these are historical chronicles mostly produced in codes and devotional poetry of persu urdu language there are also you will get number of reference to gender variants of gods and goddesses and now we come to uh, southern part there you can uh, see the reference of pedi in sangam literature this is also reference to gender non conforming identities and in various uh, other subcultural uh, sub regional parts of india you will come across certain subcultural spaces and events like aravan cult that is in tamil nadu and sakhi beki cult in the re border regions of karnataka as well as andhra pradesh and the yellama jatra all these are certain regional cults where you come across the celebration of gender variance and gender identity and sexual practices in india in the sense you can understand that it is more inclined to culture and religion whereas this is quite uh, different in the west there is no reference to culture in in the west uh, specifically but when in india if you come to uh, these people this transgender community they legitimize their identity by giving attributions to the epic and this puranas and uh, when we come to the medieval india also there you can see in the courts of the sultans you will find eunuchs eunuch is a derogatory term and politically that is not a character and uh, you should be referring to castrated men they were employed in the court uh, as uh, slaves but they have certain reputation in the courts of these uh, sultans and but Uh, during the colonial period when britishers came again ostracism and criminalization happened and the britishers passed the criminal tribes act and that is how the popular reference to uh, i mean uh, criminalization of uh, sexual identities same sex desire and also the criminalization of gender performance of the uh, and that is how hijra people were treated very badly by the police uh, until recently when supreme court actually scrapped this um, particular act of the british period and now the most visible gender variants in our community that we come across are trans feminine communities in india the hijra community uh, they legitimize as i said they legitimize their identity through religious myths and uh, when we discuss about trans community in india post colonialism how these people got visibilities like maybe your identities uh, you could more relate to trans identity from the image circulated in films where you find trans people as beggars uh, you find trans people as thieves they may snatch uh, things they may take um, children and they may actually uh, make uh, these people uh, these children beggars like that or they may perform in uh, certain uh, ritualistic events at, uh, during the birth of a child or uh, during weddings all these things are the, all these images that you get from films and when we discuss about trans people after uh, this colonial rule once india got independence transgender and uh, same people of homosexual identity they became minorities in india and uh, they Uh, finally they became the target groups of developmental aid of hiv aids intervention program so there is a stigma or a negative tag to these people that they are actually spreading this incurable disease of hiv and cbos which means community based organizations and non governmental organizations they have given greater visibility to these people through gender sensitization programs but what you have to keep in mind is that the tag or the visibility they got in the public sphere was slightly negative in the sense that they are prone to infection these people are carriers of diseases so it was not a positive or a pleasant picture related to people of gender variants now uh, as we come to contemporary times the supreme court began to intervene with uh, certain uh, legal uh, uh, development interventions and as a result in 2014 the transgender persons protection and rights bill passed in 2016 again uh, there is an ongoing debate and a new version of the bill was passed in 2019 now it has become an act but still there is an ongoing criticism against various uh, 
aspects of that act related to revealing one's identity and the medical certification that uh, people get to prove their transgender identity etc and transgender when you come to the context of kerala it's a new term or a novel term that is uh, adopted in the policy document of uh, the government of kerala social justice department in the international conference held in trivandrum in 2015 even before that the government has conducted a survey and they could identify uh, an amount of transgender people in kerala and uh, in kerala also gender identity movement began to get more visibility with as i said the cbo intervention of the cbos and ngos uh, in the 70s onwards and for the last two years last two decades not years decades from the 1990s onwards there were so many interventions from the activist groups as well as academics with a compassionate treatment towards uh, people of gender variance transgender people as well as uh, same sex loving people so um, that is actually a beginning of modern sensibilities or sentiments in academic sphere as well as in the public sphere related to transgender people and community and even before that there was a rigorous uh, disciplining of familial codes was established in kerala in the 1950s and 1960s but in the 1970s the speciality is the feminist uprisings and so in a sense uh, activists were uh, actually listening to these people and in the 90s so many conferences happened and family planning programs of the government uh, as i said as i said already about uh, government interventions when we talked about india this family planning programs also has given a dystopic picture about transgender people as carriers of disease uh, at that time this term transgender was not in use and they were the carriers of disease and but these people of gender variants they began to start certain clubs certain subcultural spaces unknowingly in different parts of kerala like uh, same sex groups initially martina navratilova club in trivandrum men in india movement in kochi malabar cultural forum in calicut and this malabar cultural forum has a cultural space that a festival that is orikam which they annually conduct and uh, trans people and queer people come for this gathering so uh, gay men and feminine presenting men feminine presenting men is a politically correct term which i i was initially using the term effeminate men but when i started to get into the depth of the scholarship i uh, began to understand that effeminate is a term a derogatory tag and we should be referring to those people as feminine presenting men that is the most accepted usage in academia and these people have greater visibility in the public sphere of kerala and they have certain derogatory tags as well for instance if a person if a male starts learning dance you will start calling him with certain other terms okay which is not at all pleasant for them uh, it is a it is a kind of negative tag actually you are um, it's a dehumanizing approach to them so uh, these are certain uh, kind of visibility for trans and queer people in the public sphere of kerala in the 90s and in the beginning of 2000s now come to the influence or the contribution by literature cultural text as well as media and films to this gender studies scholarship with respect to the and also i'll be looking into the details of this shifting representational politics of gender identities with reference to queer and trans people okay so when we look at uh, malayalam literature where you can see that uh, traditionally we will be referring to uh, feminine identity as well as masculine identity in literary text those are the heroes and heroines but we don't have gen people with gender identity even beyond the possibilities of masculinity and femininity or those voices are often muted in literary text and uh, during my research the first reference i have had as shabdangal by vaikam mohammad bashir voices a book that was uh, criticized heavily for its overtly uh, sexual expressions and in that there is a reference a 
term that is homosexually assaulted there is a person who actually attacks another person a queer person and the term homosexually assaulted and there is a reference to hijra community who was a part of the hijra community one person who was abducted and who joined the hijra community and there is a negative representation of um, the trans community within the text but th this is because at that time this was the knowledge about these people okay so that influenced made this reference in that particular text and later in the 1970s in uh, kamala suraya's short story ende kada or my story there you have a reference this is also a derogatory reference popularized in the malabar region kundan and this refer to so, uh, this it means soft looking feminine presenting young male but it is a derogatory term to refer to people of homosexual orientation and our public imagination is that always the soft looking feminine presenting young male may be a gay so that is how sexuality is actually linked to one's gender identity confusion always now certain later short story collections like നപുംസകങ്ങൾ ബൈ മാധവി കുട്ടി അഗൈൻ ആൻഡ് ഇന്ദു മെനോൻസ് ഹിജഡയുടെ കുട്ടി ദൻ പ്രമോദ് രാമൻസ് ഷോർട്ട് സ്റ്റോറി ചേതാംശ ജീവിതം ഓൾ ദീസ് ബുക്സ് ഹാവ് റെഫറൻസ് ടു ട്രാൻസ്ജെൻഡർ പീപ്പിൾ അഗൈൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് ഓൾസോ ഫ്രം ദ ഐഡൻറ്റിറ്റി ഓർ ഫ്രം ദ കൾച്ചറൽ ഇമാജിനേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹൗ ഹിജറ പീപ്പിൾ ആർ okay and then rathi madavande uh, putran is another book that refer to a cure individual and edwin paul by c v balakrishnan also has reference to trans people and cure people and another novel by m m menon hijda and a translated work avan uh, uh, and adu uh, aval means he and she Uh, is is equal to is by a tamil this is a tamil book originally and this is translated to english and all these books translated to malayalam also and all these books are reference to trans community even before um, i mean 2000 and uh, during the 2000 so all these books uh, especially is that they gave an outsiders gaze at the transgender people's life and and in a sense you can say that all these books are representative of our own transphobia and homophobia okay and uh, when we move further we can see in the beginning of 2000s trans people began started writing autobiographies so these self narratives like jerina's oru malayali hijrida atmagada and uh, a tamil uh, trans person as well as a writer revathi her uh, uh, by i mean not biography autobiography oru hijrida atmagada this is translated to malayalam as well as english and many other languages all these started creating an impact or discussion in the public sphere about the life of hijra people and the kind of harassments and marginalization they face in society and again activists and transgender people themselves began to take clues from them and they started certain activism in the public sphere itself and um, the biography of shri nandu shri nandu's case was uh, i mean uh, what i should say it i couldn't use the word popularized but there was this was a case that is widely discussed in media mostly with a negative tag like two girls they just wanted to live together and sheela and shri nandu and this became so infamous in the sense that um, finally shri nandu just uh, established the identity of a trans man so there is always a question whether shri nandu is uh, initially a lesbian in denial or as a trans man okay there are so many other emerging uh, political debates on that i am not going into the depth of that but in search of space a transgender tells his story by rajashekaran nayar is a biography about shri nandu so shri nandu's this story uh, brought to the discussion in the public sphere about trans men identity as well till then we have been discussing about feminine identified trans people now uh, in the contemporary times we have a transgender poet who is celebrated vijayaraja maliga uh, whose devathinte magal the daughter of god um, is a collection of poetry that discusses about the experience as a trans 
feminine identity and as a trans person living in kerala and many other academic books and new articles features in uh, media as well as in academic journals are emerging pertaining to kerala on trans and queer scholarship so all these autobiographies as well as the biography and the poetry of vijayaraja malliga in a sense i could say that this is giving uh, an account of personal narrative or an insider's perspective about transgender identity if we should say if we compare this with the other fictional accounts about hijra identity now moving on to uh, these are the cover pics of the autobiography oru hijriyada atmagatha as well as oru malayali hijriyada atmagatha uh, and now let's have a quick glance at how cure and trans identities are discussed in the cultural discourses of contemporary times so if uh, to say like uh, what it means to be cultural discourse the cultural discourse could be defined as a historically transmitted exp expressive system of communication practices of acts even styles which are composed of specific symbolic uh, forms norms and their meaning uh, and by gibson and milburn cited in carabo in 1997 Uh, from this sense if you take the cultural cue you can understand that the cure and trans identities have been a topic of discussion in uh, these cultural narratives quite for a long time for instance hijra community is always uh, discussed and depicted in the cultural narratives various acts in uh, not just literature but as well as in temple festivals and various events in the public sphere and uh, usually these events are religious events uh, performed by certain ritualistic community in set uh, cultural spaces and this is how the hijra identity is quite distinguished from the trans identity concepts in the west so uh, cultural discourses have a significant role there now uh, when i look at uh, that um, public sphere of kerala with respect to the cultural discourses you can see that kerala's public sphere uh, has been uh, transphobic as i said because those people who had certain confusion about their gender identity they migrated to other states Uh, and they join the subcultural spaces of hijra communities or um, yellama communities in other states and but towards the end of the um, last decade of the 20th century as well as the first decade of the 21st century due to cultural and political activism these people started to make a comeback to the state and uh, they started forming certain cultural spaces like one is uh, kochan kulangara temple festival and kochan kulangara is a temple in chavara district in kollam where uh, this is actually not a transgender festival but uh, this festival is related to uh, men who cross dress as women and perform uh, they take a ritualistic lantern and they perform uh, they perform certain offering for the deity of the kochan kulangara temple but uh, what happened is like when trans people began to come back to the state they just made the festival as their own because this though this is just one or two day festival they get an opportunity to perform their identity so trans feminine identities started to participate in these festival and made a subcultural space there and another festival is orikam festival organized by malabar cultural forum the cure and trans uh, group and uh, uh, along with them many other cbos community based organization they started uh, uh, pride parades in the public sphere of kerala beauty pageants photo exhibitions film festivals skits and stage shows etc in the first uh, two decades of the uh, 21st century mostly after 2010 i should say and this in a sense made transgender and queer identity is a topic of discussion and has given greater visibility in kerala and uh, visual media and cyber space also have a significant role for these trans people to come out and articulate their identity they uh, have offered um, uh, various opportunities 
to redefine gender dissidents as well as to give visibility to their identity in uh, kerala and from this the kerala government was motivated and that's and they just gave cure and trans inclusive programs through this and uh, you can see from the picture uh, on the top left you can find a snippet from the potten kulangara temple festival and on the top right you can find uh, the pride parade uh, that happened last year and uh, in the middle uh, you can find the first um, beauty page and by kyon of daya that happened in 2017 in ernakulam and the person who is standing in the middle is a classmate of mine that is uh, shyama s prabha currently the project officer of transgender welfare a trans uh, who identify as a trans woman and uh, these are certain subcultural spaces in kerala Uh, at present and now moving on to my major area of inquiry but i would i wouldn't have that much time to go into the depth of this but i will be talking generally about gender variance in malayalam film and about all those films which i have actually referred to while i did the research so when when i say gender variance in cinema i can say that cinema has already had depictions about gender variance through cross dressing and through the gender performance of the cure people uh, mild representations of hijra communities in various films and uh, in certain contemporary films where trans actors become trans characters and uh, certain major films where cis gender actors cis gender is a term that is used in gender studies scholarship where a person who doesn't have any um, ob- uh, who doesn't have any objection with their biological identity which means that uh, if i am a female by birth i do not have any objection or gender confusion about the uh, expected so social role about femininity and i am performing femininity so i am a cis gender uh, but i have already mentioned about what it means to be a transgender so how cis actors they perform lead uh, transgender roles in cinema so this is how if you can trace the history of gender variance in malayalam cinema in general and a number of malayalam films have characters and mostly side characters who do not conform to the heteronormative gender identity and sexuality and various uh, representational politics of dumb in malayalam films and um, in in the beginning female impersonation was the norm that is cross dressing it is a kind of uh, in a, a way of enacting gender employed largely in theater traditions at a time when women was not allowed to perform gender on stage so this is a kind of cure performance that offer us a glimpse about thinking beyond gender binary performing a gender that is not yours okay so this on stage female impersonation created a kind of visual pleasure as those bodies as palatable surrogate i take this term from katherine hansen who has analyzed this female impersonation in indian theater and this is a kind of pleasure by witnessing a gender stunt on screen and uh, cinema has adopted this this particular uh, female impersonation as well as male impersonation limited in number in cinema and in this way gender dissidents created visual pleasure on screen initially so you can find a number of uh, roles by adur basi prem nasi duo in early malayalam cinema they were performing as cross dressed gender dissidents and later film started uh, i mean uh, actors who usually perform the role of subversive male like indrans uh, jagadish kuchin hanifa all these actors whom you usually refer to as comedians they began to uh, per, uh, perform as feminine presenting men but offering comic pleasure and these bodies were seen as derogatory visual spectacles on screen and these are certain snippets i have taken from films of the um, on the top left you can find adur basi as well as uh, prem nasir crossed us in a movie and uh, on the top you can find innocent who is regarded as a, a popular comedian 
and then uh, certain contemporary films uh, at the end and uh, in the middle you can find manju warrior in daya but this representation is slightly different from the representational politics of male actors when they present feminine bodies so uh, and now coming on to my uh, area of inquiry how trans identities are represented in malayalam cinema i have just taken seven film text for detail inquiry and i had analyzed various aspects of this trans representations in these films and the first film is chandu potta and i i was actually referring to why you cannot call chandu potta as a trans film because the director also is telling that it is not a trans film and why you can call it as a trans film and why you cannot call it as a trans film so uh, what conclusion i draw from chandu potta is that this is a movie that always show uh, different tendencies of a disciplining or a patriarchal disciplining of a person uh, taking them back to the identity of accepted social role so in that sense you can call it a trans film where a person undergo a, undergoes a strict patriarchal disciplining but in another sense you have you can call it as a film which is not trans film but that is about some if and somebody's attempt to um, bring up a child uh, and in the wrong way so these thing uh, is still debated uh, from different dimensions okay now not going into the depth of that and ardhan ari is another movie which i have analyzed and this is in a true sense a film that tried to depict what it means to be hijra community not in the public sphere of kerala but outside kerala okay this film was actually uh, shot in tamil nadu and uh, this film shows us how transphobic the public sphere of kerala even in 2012 and this film also showed us how a person experiences gender confusion and how we should uh, judge a person not just based on the body but based on one psychological gender as well as this film again linked with uh, our traditional understanding of how trans people legitimize their identity by associating themselves to myths and all then uh, odum raja adum rani is a less known film this also i have analyzed in this uh, actor manikandan who is a cis gender actor has uh, uh, represented or performed a trans character and again in this movie also uh, is a transition phase in the public sphere of kerala where gender dissidence is often associated with one's same sex desire and a confused identification of what it means to be a transgender person and what it means to be a cure or homosexual person this is always debated in the film odum raja adum rani and irata jividam is a significant film in the sense that this is the only film that is about a trans man identity as well as lesbian a person who is a lesbian in denial this film was shot in calicut as well as in malappuram whereas you can see this is a cis gender female actor who is uh, presenting as a trans man and this film discusses about what it means to be a trans man in the public sphere of kerala and also this you could actually compare with the other films where uh, trans feminine identities are depicted okay and uh, again two other recent films alarukam and nyan merikuti uh, and when we discuss these films another thing is we can notice like always in film studies there are approaches like you just uh, analyze popular movies you just al- analyze independent films so uh, different other nuances of this uh, analysis also there but uh, i just take it as a feature film and in alarukam and nyan merikuti the speciality is there is trans feminine identity uh, it is still debated Uh, judged as represented in true sense there is a kind of dignified treatment of trans people in these films but still uh, uh, this I- this idea could be debated further whether it is uh, dignified in true sense then finally uh, a recent award winning film udalalam that was uh, shown in iffk and released last year this 
again takes transgender identity to another level when a trans person who belongs to the tribal community and what it means to be a transgender person or a trans feminine person or a gender cure from a marginalized community certain other represent representational aspects are also discussed in kudalalu so these are the seven films i have analyzed for my study and from this uh, i had looked at the aspects of representational politics of gender identity of these trans lead characters the representation of their sexuality and same sex uh, they not I, sh i shouldn't say same sex desire their sexual desire and how these films they present uh, the visual aspects of gender identity gender identity and its performance and how these films visualized violence against people of gender variance and whether this depictions of violence is offered as a power politics or are they offering us a kind of uh, reading of trauma or are they giving us uh, power of i mean politics of gaze or pleasure in looking at trans bodies experiencing violence and also i have analyzed the social positioning of these trans lead characters in these films and how the social positioning gets a change over a decade and also in another chapter i have analyzed how the production circulation and consumption and the politics of production circulation and consumption of these films in um, public sphere of kerala and the emergence of cure and trans spectatorship uh, in films and certain future analytical frames uh, that could be drawn from these films because in my thesis i have not analyzed these films with reference to any other language films or hollywood movies i was just focusing on to malayalam films only so this could be a future analytical inquiry like you can actually have a comparative reading of these films with other language films another thing is i just omitted a detailed analysis of trans characters performed by trans actors there are certain films where trans actors perform side roles but very limited in number so but we can hope more number of films will emerge in future and that is also uh, a possibility of inquiry in the future so the end uh, trans people come as uh, technicians and in various other capacities in film industry so all these are certain future analytical frameworks that my um, thesis uh, leaves are certain gaps so uh, and to talk about the, this particular presentation that there is certain problem when we think straight the gender role so the significance of this topic lies in pointing out the problem of thinking straight and uh, pointing out the emerging discipline or, or area in gender studies where you can think beyond being straight and uh, and from my study i i understand that we continue to look at trans identity as non normative still in scholarship i use the term non normative because still we see it as the other it as the marginalized the outcast this carries the phobia that is within our mind actually we have to undo all these things and i could not not uh, i could invite your attention to this point that this is just a phase of transition only and uh, the presentness will take us to the future and where we should uh, you, we we may say by shedding this non normative tag and we will make it normative at a future point of time and Uh, the lack of trans actors to play trans characters in the films which i have dealt may offer us future possibilities of trans actors playing trans characters and trans technicians in future so this is about uh, the interdisciplinary area of films and trans identities and uh, i just skipped uh, uh, an analysis of documentaries web serials then uh, short films on trans identities there are multiple possibilities are emerging i just skipped because this is going beyond the limit so that's about my area of inquiry and my understanding about uh, thinking beyond the straight so thank you for uh, listening me thank you
so if you have it's already one, i mean one hour past ma'am yeah uh, thank you thank you very much anu um, well if there is anybody who would like to you know make an intervention here to carry the discussion forward or to maybe raise a point uh, of discussion or doubt if you have any question or comment i welcome some feedback <laughs> maybe they might be embarrassed with so many new terms yeah but we have our teachers here as well yeah most of them are here i have seen shyama ma'am's name yeah <laughs> among your teachers shyama ma'am remni ma'am are here uh, okay mm -hmm. i'm so happy and humbled by my teachers listening to my presentation <laughs> after 10 years mm -hmm. we are even happier actually to see the the depth of scholarship you know that you have acquired in the brief span of these 10 years it, it tells us a great deal about how research is to be uh, your area of focus was of course films but then to reach that to make any kind of in academic intervention in that field you know the kind of academic uh, the the scholarship that you need to stand on that you need to have an idea about that was very very clear i think that is the big take home message from this you know the depth of scholarship that a good phd work you know brings with it and also i think it highlighted the the very significant uh, significance of reading Uh, you know engaging in studies and reading and interpreting from again non straight perspectives yes, yes. <laughs> i'm aware of the sanctity that we accord to straight even when we say non straight but uh, right now i guess we are constricted isn't that so we need to keep calling it non straight but anyway the importance of looking at uh, anything any text from that uh, yes, so. not so normative a position and also the the yeah, way yeah we actually should really define this what it means to be normative and what is what it means to be non normative shyama ma'am is telling something no i was just trying to uh, convey my appreciation i feel really <laughs> proud Thank that you. you first student that actually come up with this I'm really proud to listen to you Um, thank it, you ma'am all we are always students we are always students we try to learn from everyone yes okay, when we have our presentations in our classes as well it's uh, it's really engaging whatever i listen to you it i should say i have to admit that it was a learning experience for me now um, uh, referring to one uh, recent uh, uh, movie that came up actually a kind of uh, compilation i think uh, I, i don't know uh, i mean they given a real I mean, a different term for it, a power kadagal. Yes. 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 Uh, okay. Now you mentioned about how uh, you used a term cis. What was that? C I S. Cis gender. Cis gender. Okay. So you have this. Um, uh, okay. This. Um, what do you say? Uh, you have a uh, satar being enacted by a male. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cis gender actor. Yeah. Kalidas. Now uh, yes. the uh, director, I think, uh, mentioned how um, she had tried to approach some actors in um, Malayalam industry. She named one, and then uh, she said that he did not feel comfortable, and therefore he uh, opted out of it. Then there was another person who had already enacted a similar role, and therefore he too uh, did not want it. Then there was another person who didn't want to be maimed. Okay, and uh, just. Uh, but uh, there is always this question about why uh, trans people are not given that particular role okay it is always uh, appropriated yes. by other people uh, maybe you have gone at length or maybe you have uh, sort of uh, probed at length regarding this issue yes 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 i just mentioned about this and that is where I, my thesis stands my thesis ends that this analysis is lacking because we don't have trans actors 
even if we have they are actually performing roles in comedy skits or in television serials and all this is because of the politics of i mean popular stardom fandom in film industry so if you have if you have to make a film that uh, should make some return then you wouldn't be casting trans people in the lead role because of that so that is how nyan meri kutti stands different from the other movies nyan meri kutti is a film that's made huge return that may be the one and only film that uh, made or popularized what it means to be a transgender identity and the certain visual aspects of trans feminine identity in the public sphere of kerala even before that people do not know what it means to be transgender maybe it is uh, hijra community or uh, people who come in trains they uh, those who snatch our money those who abduct children and maybe those they have images from hindi movies like trans trans people as villainous but nyan meri kutti is the only movie in malayalam that popularized the identity of trans people in one sense but it is all, always criticized by uh, trans people and a group of activists as this is a motivational gimmick only because a trans person should be the uh, most capable person to perform as a trans character then only you can have an insider's gaze of trans life what it means to be trans identity so Uh, that is one area um, that is emerging trans cinema uh, do you feel uh, anjali would have been a good choice for that role that we were talking of earlier of course ma'am anjali would have been a, uh, anjali would have played very well for that role i think so she could have chosen uh, but in tamil industry she has got Uh, some role as the heroine of uh, mammutti but again the problem is that seeing transgender identity with respect to trans femininity is also in a sense restricting our views because transgender identity itself is a fluid identity you will get one side of trans identity if you could cast anjali for the role what jay surya has played but in order to make it a popular film again the fandom of anjali versus uh, jay surya matters we can hope in future that films where anjali is the um, act, actor she popularly refer, she wish to identify as a choice as a trans woman not even a trans woman but as a woman that is her choice and you cannot actually tag uh, this trans Uh, to a person if they do not wish to be identify as such so various other politics related to this is also there uh, partly uh, my query was related to that whether she would like to have played that role whether she would have preferred playing the role of women so that was actually that that was the drift of my question okay thank you yeah. anna it was great yes. to see you thank you Anu, I'm Shanti, faculty department of English. Yeah. Hi, ma'am. I'm so happy to have your presentation. I was, um, I mean, a bit sorry that I could join only late, uh, maybe ten minutes after you began your presentation. There were some technical glitches. Uh, let me see if I can switch on my video. Right. <laughs> okay. So uh, that was a wonderful presentation, very comprehensive, and uh, I think our students would have had a very, uh, you know. Uh, no uh, what to say ever a novel experience of uh, looking at uh, uh, the uh, tales of this particular community which definitely uh, will take them a long way towards understanding uh, their own um, discipline in fact and also the society outside and uh, i don't know if we, uh, whether you mentioned this at the beginning but uh, or rather um, i mean i missed the first part of Uh, the first ten minutes of your talk, I was uh, I always had this feeling that our epics, Indian epics, Indian mythology, is so full of you have a plethora of uh, uh, transgender tales and characters. You have Brahmandala uh, Arjuna uh, transforming him, himself, uh, 
uh, into this form. Then we have the story of Shikandi, uh, then the Ardhanari Shura concept. Mm -hmm. Then we have the touching tale in Ramayana where uh, Rama asks uh, all men and women to wait for him or rather to return to Ayodhya and wait for him there till he uh, comes back and we have the trans I think she lost connection yeah. then they can go back or not so uh, we have uh, in fact this kind of a culture which uh, celebrated or rather which uh, afforded a space for uh, all kinds of people and this country took over uh, I mean uh, almost some 75 years to acknowledge their identity uh, their presence and to give them their legitimate uh, constitutional rights uh, what should have been or what would have been the reason I always wonder uh, what what was your take on it rather than the European influence rather than the influence uh, uh, of uh, the other kind of cultures? Will, will there be any particular? Um, I always I had doubt this. In fact, uh, from my understanding, I think we always have this uh, I mean rigorous disciplining in terms of heteronormativity. That is, uh, okay. and uh, I mean, inculcating this cis gender idea and the socially accepted gender roles and how it is to be performed. Okay, and uh, that is with respect to gender identity as well as sexual performances as well. So even though we had these uh, gender variants in epics, Puranas, myths as there, but the thing is that we always attribute this to gods or goddesses. So there is a kind of divinity for uh, when the god or the gods or goddesses performing it. But when in the case of humans, this is not possible. This is difficult. So in that sense, uh, there was a kind of rigorous disciplining when humans tried to perform it. And we uh, and when we look at hijra community, we can see that on the one hand. They are reward. They get place at, um, I mean, birth and uh, weddings. They are invited and they were given batai or offering. But at another sense, they are sexually assaulted. They were actually castrated. They beg for to make a living. So there is polemic view. Uh, that itself is ironic. And from that, we inculcated a phobia uh, on what it means to be trans identity or, or uh, hijra identity. So from that, I think that is how this phobia, in a sense, marginalized them, made them an outcast. I'm not sure whether I have answered you to the point, to an extent. Of course. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to uh, uh, rather ask you if you can give us any um, you know, any link or any books or any kind of uh, research um, documents or rather uh, dissertations which have worked on this particular, uh, you know, question of why is it that in India we, where we used to celebrate uh, or where uh, transgender characters, tales and uh, people were celebrated uh, um, I mean, they are not recognized yes, or they uh, suffer a, the, some kind of a phobia as it is in the West. Okay. Uh, in Serena Nanda, she is a noted author and historian and an anthropologist. And in her work in the 1990s, I think um, beyond the binaries, she had actually uh, I mean, okay. written about Hijra community. And then in the beginning of 2000s, Gayatri Reddy has done her anthropological research study about Hijra community in Hyderabad. And there also she has noted about uh, why and uh, what is transgender identity, uh, the ritualistic aspects and uh, concepts about um, identity formations of Hijra community in India and how that is different from the West and how this uh, different historical perspectives about ancient medieval and um, post-colonial modern sensibilities about identifying trans people in Kerala, not, not in Kerala, in Hyderabad, 
in her study this is gayatri reddy then gayatri gopinath is there her identifications is mostly not about gender identity and performance but she will be looking more into the same sex desire and uh, cure uh, sexual identities and identity formations with respect to kerala as well as from indian perspective then uh, there are some other scholarships as well ruth vanida and salim kidwai their work are there and many other scholars are there on this area so th- thank you so much uh, anu for all your response and also for uh, giving these names or rather i think it will be uh, helpful to the students also thank you so much so anu has actually set apart quite a long uh, a gap a span of time for us because the session began at uh, uh, 2:30 yeah so it's been a very long time it's close to 2 hours now yeah so i think shall we wind up uh, if uh, the students if you if you have any questions i'll be happy to forward it to anu i'm i'm sure she will uh, join us on later occasions we would be very very glad to have you back with us anu um, in various capacities so we can take this forward right now i think i'll wind up the session with an expression of deep gratitude and great pride it 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 fills us with great joy to see you you know uh, most of you were not here when i began with a, an insight into you know an, an nss program that anu had participated or she was one of the uh, key members of that group you know where you had this maya v uh, presentation and uh, the fluidity of the characters there you know has i think colored your uh, journey all along so may may take you far anu and may the world of you know literary studies and scholarship have greater contributions from you we wish you all the very best and look forward to closer ties with you in future too thank you to all the teachers here and the students of the pg classes so we'll wind up the session now thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you bindu ma'am and other respected teachers and it's always just like a homecoming to me to back to providence in fact i just wanted to physically visit providence but it is not possible right now but still i am so happy and overwhelmed with joy to be uh, an invited speaker to providence my alma mater so thank you for inviting me bindu ma'am and uh, asking me this question uh, shyama miss and uh, shanti miss and i saw ramani ma'am so thank you for listening me and my these students also all the very best to the first years as well as the second years because you are going to do your dissertation choose wisely choose emerging genre of inquiry and find something interesting and contribute your own so thank you Thank you very much. Thank you, Hannah. We'll keep in touch. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.